Welcome to this extremely creepy edition of Let's Spend the Night Together, the devil's favorite late night podcast. We are glad you've joined us to partake in a night of trick and treats, ritual sacrifice, and dick jokes. We have assembled a coven of wicked tales, heavy on evil sauce, and dripping with sarcasm and references that would make Dennis Miller cream. Come with us now, if you dare, as we venture down into the pit of man's deepest desires and worst fears. Prepare yourself! Hello, welcome to yeah. Let's Spend the Night Together. Hello. Very special. Welcome, everyone. Halloween edition. It is special, but I feel like a cool chill breeze on the back of my neck yeah like the second we started this that's episode. evil craig is that what it is yes there's a lot of mist let me just set the stage because yeah the people obviously they can't see what's going on right now but it's me and you in a room yeah in this haunted french spanish villa of ours and there's mist yeah. everywhere mist ever what is with that i don't it know just rolled in today i did get a fog machine earlier but it's not that if yeah. this is just right off the bog oh this is that good it's old fashioned stuff machine. no no okay. no this is swamp gas yeah and we're looking at our crystal ball and we're thinking it's time to talk to some time spirits. for more fog to roll in. <laughs> <laughs> we're waiting for our halloween party to get here yeah and we're gonna go out and we're gonna have a ball i'm gonna get mighty yeah. mighty drunk right because for halloween we kind of had a different way to celebrate this yeah. year. We figured, you know, why why go out and have all the hullabaloo of getting laid and being trick, social? Uh, trees. Yeah. Uh, no. What else? Forget that. Yeah. We're going to talk to some spirits. Yeah. We're going to talk to the other side. Yeah. And I'm not talking Anthony Kiedis either. Oh. I'm talking about... John Frusciante. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about going into the great blue Under the yonder. Bridge. That's another great song, but besides that, okay. no. I'm yeah. talking about the other side, Craig. Heaven? Hell? We're going to find out. Plus, we also have a big time murder case that, that we're going to. That's what I'm. Well, finally, that's. To solve. It's, I, think, I believe it's up to us, the, the men that solved yeah. the murder, finally, who killed Jack the Ripper. We have to solve who killed. We're gonna we're the gonna thing solve. People have been wondering for years. We're gonna solve the biggest case of them all. Who killed poor Jack? Who killed Brian Jones? Ah, uh, that's right. You see, we, yeah, I got very dramatic there. We did. We've done Ooh. a lot of Rolling Stones stories. That's how this podcast started. Yes, originally. Then, and, and we were doing Rolling Stones album reviews, mm -hmm. specifically the U.S. studio albums. And then we've been telling stories. And we even started telling the Brian Jones story, some of his story. Yes. But now we're going to kind of conclude his story. He has a rather grim Dark ending, and dreary final ending. Final chapter. Yeah. yeah. Let's just get right to it. I mean, if his spirit lives on, so. Well, it lives on within us, you know? Kind of like that yeah. Indian man with Jim Morrison. Yeah. I mean, it's like the same thing. Or that right? Inuit man. Oh, that's a whole other thing. Right? Yeah, that's that's another episode. Hey, man, yes, that was one of my out. my many stepdads that I had to live he, with. He growing whispered up. into your ear, your yeah. stepdad's ear. That was, I think, dad too. Yeah, he looked just like Rick Mahorn. Because you've had all these different men, that, and you call them dad. They, well, there was a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my mom had a lot of boyfriends when yeah. I was growing up. You know. Okay. So yeah, so but that's were, not a. Those were your dads. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that guy. Yeah, I mean, one. I told you, one of them looked like Rick Mahorn. Rick Mahorn. Yeah. And he always wore this jersey that said Mahorn. Uh, yeah, you know what? You know, all him. these years later, I, I'm starting to believe that was Joe Dumars. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the, it's so weird because... The you, people you in Detroit the, are dying right the, now. I know it. The king's schedule, the Pistons were always in town whenever he would, like, come over to your house. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, but they were... noises. They were... The hell, no, they, they were installing carpet. That's what mm -hmm. all those, like, the, the loud noise and banging it around like, was. It kind of sounded like in Forrest Gump when Forrest... Elvis comes over or whatever. I've never seen that. Movie. Or no, it's when the principal comes over and he hears his mom going, ee, ee, ee. Is that PG thirteen? <laughs> that movie? No. Oh, okay. it is actually. I, think. I haven't seen that one. 
You haven't? <laughs> <laughs> I was still thinking about this. <laughs> Just thinking. Mama. <laughs> well, well, that, that, your mama sure does scare up care about your schooling boy <laughs> this is just bringing back like a lot of personal memories so i don't want to go yeah. i know this is hollow. You're like forest yeah well in a way yeah i mean i'm simple like that yeah. i mean i've my family has always told me i'm very simple minded uh, and you're a kicker turner for uh, alabama, alabama. <laughs> <laughs> and you were on like what was it the dick cavett show or whatever yes with uh and you explained to with john, john lennon. lennon yeah yeah with john lennon and yoko <laughs> oh no no god and no religion, too. John. John, why did... why Forrest Gump, for good friend. The Chinese don't believe in religion. The Chinese. Did he ever uh, teach John how to play ping pong? In Ding Dang. All right, moving on. <laughs> he did, it was. Let's get in to... In the heart of Ding Dang. The day the Rolling Stones co-founder, Brian Jones, was found dead. Found. We're going to go straight to no the, this murder living. mystery. Now, yeah. let's let's say that... Let's give it a little pretext. We have been planning our yeah. dear... Our hearts Dear out. listeners. Yeah. This uh, this documentary, this... I mean, we're, we're solving a goddamn yeah. murder case. It's kind of like a it, it, serial it, or exactly. making a murder. You know what? And we hear, we hear things. Corey's been sending me all kinds of emails that I delete. Yeah, a lot, Corey. more often than not. But when I yeah. do read them, he says, these crime... Life. He is, yeah. He's a little wave. He's a little. He's sweet boy, sweet guy of a producer. Um, so these crime podcasts, I guess they're in right now. Yeah, the, really it's a it's an industry term. They call it in. Oh, in. Uh, yeah, in huh. quotations. I'll you can't see later. me, I'll, listener. Well, I'll Google it. But uh, yeah, so I guess the crime it. podcasts are really big. So we're going yeah, to take. Yeah, I I know that people were talking about our our previous podcast where we've alluded to this this. Case. You know, case that, Cold case. This, like, this podcast where we're going to you know investigate and get to the bottom of this. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people, before we were able to record it, what we're doing right now, yeah. people recorded their own serial killer and murder. Yeah, yeah. Podcast. Once the word got out that the we were going to do out, the, the definitive case. There's a lot yeah. of cases out there, to, but, yeah. but to be kind of honest with you, those are boring. Yeah. Like those people that are like, oh, I'm so innocent, I'm in jail oh, for like, life. I'm like, come life, on, yeah. please. Like... This crack is what's important. Case. Yeah, crack your own case. Come on. Yeah. Come I'm on. Crack Be egg. your own boss. You know what I'm saying? Crack an egg. Scramble them up. So we figure... Yeah, I don't know. The, yeah, that, that just isn't glamorous, Craig. Yeah. That's not the, 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 the bells and whistles. If it's not glamorous, you just kind of take what life gave you and just roll with it. Yeah. You're in, you're in prison for life or something you didn't do. Yeah. But it's not You just pick yourself up by your bootstraps. It's not interesting. Just be quiet. Yeah, pick yeah. yourself up. Just throw a guy in a cage. That's all. Yeah, they got books in there. You yeah. could, you know... You, you can, can read. play basketball at intramurals. Yeah, you can work out. All right. <laughs> the day the Rolling Stones co-founder Brian Jones was found dead. Yeah. So let's just start. He was dead. Just Ooh, I just got another Ooh. chill on my spine. Do you think the ghost of Brian Jones will visit us tonight to kind of help it's us? It's quite possible. Possibly help us. I mean, I see that the moon is out. Yeah. And it's hitting my eye. Yeah. Like a big pizza pie. That's so I think that there's probably going to be something. a ghost out. Dean Martin? Paging Dean Martin? What is that? <laughs> That's Freud. No, I'm just hungry. Hearts right. will play, tippy tippy tay, tippy tippy tay, ah. like a gay paddle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pazano. All right. Uh, Brian Jones, Dean the Martin. news that Our sent. Newest guest. Yeah, yeah, that sent shockwaves through the rock world. Rolling Stones co founder Brian Jones was. When found. Dean Martin died? That was the saddest thing ever. Yeah, the saddest thing ever. I wanted to kill myself. I was like, Dino's was dead. Sad I just want to walk out in the traffic rock, right now. Rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be it's gonna be a really big uh, 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 dark day for metal when Jethro Toll dies, too. It's going to oh, be bad. God. You remember they won that metal award, <laughs> the Grammy award? Oh, They beat yeah. out Metallica. That's right. kind of crazy. Yeah. Okay, so uh, right. Brian Jones was found dead at his home in Clutchford. Oh, yeah. How, for for Wait, what was it? for what all was... our fans out there, how do we how do how do I pronounce that correctly, Craig? I know you've been d- doing some uh, snooping around. You've been talking to some locals. Yeah, Colchford Farm. Ah, in Hartfield, East Sussex. So he passed away. No one near Liverpool. <laughs> July third, nineteen sixty nine. Ah. At the time of his passing, Jones' life was in the midst of a severe upheaval. The year before, he'd been arrested for the second time 
For possession of cannabis. For possession of mad guitar skills. Mad, you're, you're, you're blowing my mind. For cannabis? Yeah, possession of cannabis. Speaking, Actually, you want to speak of, of which, cannabis. <laughs> uh, which further exacerbates the tensions he's been oh, having. I, I did that streets. twice earlier before uh, we did the show. That's personal, Craig. I exacerbated. Oh. Uh, yeah, you're just blowing things up. Should I not like, explain that to, on the podcast? Is or, that what is that, that cool? saying is on the front of your trousers? Oh, it says, Matt, I like to masturbate. <laughs> 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 on the front of my trousers. Yeah. On top of that, it's like, this is uh, fake, Craig. On top of that, it seemed to many that his heart just wasn't in the band anymore. So on top of, like, being arrested and shit and your life falling apart, yeah, people are just like, you just don't have it anymore. Uh, Your little bird quit. Hey, Brian, you're fired. Brian, you had a lot of personality and everybody likes you, but (coughs) since all this shit's happening to you, like, personally... We're going to add to it. You're fucking fired. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You're kind of, like, bumming everybody (coughs) out, so if you wouldn't come Uh, around so much... I'm the singer, right? Keith is guitar. All right, mate? Oh, man. Who do you think you are, Jumping Jack Fly? <laughs> now, a uh, little sponsor. I'm, I'm enjoying oh, some. Uh, oh, a Chesterfield cigarette. Chesterfield cigarette. Right yeah, now. I just I sparked up a Chesterfield cigarette too. It's delicious. Mine is uh, uh, tangy honey barbecue. <laughs> That's <Most> delicious. <laughs> Bye. Nacho cheese. <laughs> That's delicious. Chesterfields. That is some quality tobacco. <coughs> I think this tobacco went bad. All right. Well, we're Sometimes recording. I, I undo the cigarette and then just chew on it like bubble gum. Oh my All god! The tobacco in it. I can't swallow. That's not what you said last night. Woo! Woo! Thank you, thank you. I'm thank just kicking you. up my footsies right now, my yeah. feet up in the sky. Heal to Jesus. I'm going to be working out some material throughout the show. It's good, man. I wanted more spooky material, though, because this is like a really It's scary very evil episode. with all this mist. I mean, if we do... There's a lot a of atmosphere of in this room. Evoking what we're, mm-hmm. what's going on with us in the podcast. Yes. And what we're thinking about. Yes. It, you know, we wouldn't be telling the whole story if the podcast itself, it needs to be spooky. Yeah, because what we're experiencing right now is spooky. This is paranormal. Over my shoulder. Yeah, it's dark in this in this noises. room right now. Yeah, I could go turn on the lights right now, but I'm not going to. No, because I'm going to keep. Well, it. the the power went out at the mansion. You didn't tell me. Oh my! Villa. You didn't tell That's me. That's why that. I should have told you. You know, uh, you, you know you that I the, freak you out. Had all the lights switched to off, so you didn't know. Mm. They're usually because yeah. Well, I'm conserving energy for some reason. But yes, I don't like a lot of lights. So I lit some candles. Look over there on the floor in the corner. It's it next put, to the other candelabra. I put a bunch of those candles, and I don't know, I just felt like doing them in a shape. It was totally random. I did a circle, uh-huh. and inside of the circle was like a star, five-pointed star. Uh-huh. And I just thought it looked pretty. You just saw it like at yeah. uh, Beth Bad Beyond? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a nice little Saturday. Back to and BJ. a severed goat head with blood. I was wondering what that was from. Like, but Have you ever had goat's stuff. eyes? They're really good. Really? All right. Well, recording went on for the Rolling Stones' next album, Let It Bleed. Jones' contributes remained minimal. Yeah. He added only percussion to Midnight Rambler and an auto harp section to You Got the Silver. The group. Oh, that's cool. Has auto harp? It's one of Keefe's. Oh, yeah. So interesting. The group, wary of both his spiraling substance abuse problems and overall erratic behavior. That's funny because everybody's getting super fucked up at the time in the band. Yeah. What's Collectively so decided it was time to show Jones the door. Why'd they think it was erratic? Just because he was like beating the crap out of his wife and kids or whatever? No, I'm making that up. But what? Doesn't he definitely he, was beating the shit something? out of his girlfriend. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah. So I mean that, but that's I mean, that's important to the case <coughs> establishing motive. Right. Right. Because this isn't the nicest guy. He's okay. he's beating his wife or his his, yeah. his lady friend. He's his acting girlfriend, like a, a pile of shit. His girlfriend. Uh, what's her name? Wendy. Wendy Torrance. Wendy Torrance. She uh, she has motive, and she's uh, the caretaker for the Overlook Hotel. The 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 very same with her new husband Jack Torrance. Well, golly, <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> there she is. Wendy Torrance. I'm saying. Uh, is, is we we I have... wish Danny was here too. But what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Uh, 
You like ice cream, Doc? If I had, or what was well, that? Well, how'd you know? We call him Doc. <laughs> if I, well, I had the the psychic powers now. Wendy. I knew Brian was gonna die. I knew the Brian first Jones. time I saw you. He said we're gonna call our next album "Let It Bleed." And I said, that's going to be you, Brian. That's going to be it. <laughs> be the you, coroner Brian. is going to cut your body <laughs> oh up. My God. He's going to have to cut out all He's your organs. axe in your back. <laughs> <laughs> wait, no, that's me. Oh, wait, that's someone else. That person poison looks just like me in my imagination. I got my wires all discombobulated, <laughs> oh Brian. God. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Danny, what do you mean elevator full of blood? I... Uh, Wendy, That's pretty self-explanatory, Yeah, yeah, Mom. yeah. It's a lot of cleaning up to do. <laughs> yeah. Jack's just running around, God damn it, clear up the elevator! <laughs> uh, Quit we... throwing your titties ball against the wall, Jack. <laughs> I think you said titties ball. Titty ball? We're throwing titty ball, Jack. <laughs> your titties ball. <laughs> That's what they call sex in the Torrance house. Your titty ball. Let's play titty ball. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> <laughs> and then the little boy with his Apollo thirteen yeah. rocket shirt. That just that, that just goes to show that Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. We're gonna go down another little conspiracy alley. Yeah, uh, the moon the landing he, never happened, and that Stanley Kubrick had motive in the Brian Jones murder. Exactly, exactly <laughs> right. He had motive to fake the moon landing and Brian Jones's murder. Yeah, we've established motive, people. For a few people. What was were you gonna say about? Uh, the shot, or Kubrick? Oh, yeah, no, he faked the moon landing. Oh, the, oh I mean, he was directly he involved. That's right. Directly that's right. involved. Yeah, it was like on a set that yeah. he directed. I don't even think the moon's real. And action. I don't <laughs> think I'm real. I don't think this yeah. podcast is real. I we're, don't think we're this, start, we're this following air the, that I'm breathing is the real. The Church of Jim Carrey. <laughs> church of Ace and Church. <laughs> None of us are real. Somebody stop me. <laughs> this is a simulation we're in right now. <laughs> this isn't real. This thing called Jim Carrey, huh? Well, it's a thing, it's but a thing. it's not real. It's not me. It's not me. It's not me, it's not you. I just Maybe became a you. character, and I thought, who am I? I'm not this yeah. thing that I just became. I'm, I'm not Ace else. Ventura. I'm not Jim Carrey. What am I? I'm the... I'm, I'm Stan, Truman. I'm Stanley Ipkiss. <laughs> the, the, the worst character. Oh, wait. Yeah, I'm Truman. Uh, Truman! Truman! <laughs> well, say something, damn it! You're on television in oh, front of God. 80 million people! All right, Ed Harris. Come the fuck down. Ed Harris needs more parts. Why I'm won't your father, Why Truman. won't Hollywood hire Ed Harris? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I think he's been blacklisted. He has been blacklisted. What did he do? What did I he don't say? Know. All right, back to the murder mystery. Here's Maybe a quote for you. He knows something about Brian's murder. God, we have to all fucking these, add him to the list. All these people in Hollywood know that. God damn it! All right, we're going to. Here's a quote, people. Mm-hmm. People. It had come to a head, and Mick Jagger and I had been down to Winnie the Pooh's house. This is Keith Richards talking. All right. Keith wrote in his autobiography, referring to Jones Estate, which at one time belonged to Winnie the Pooh author A.A. Milne. What? Now, this is very important, people, yes. So he lived in the Hundred Acre Woods. Yes, he Brian was, <laughs> what, what's the kid's name? Christopher something? Christopher Robin? That is Brian Mick Jones. Jagger? Mick Jagger. Oh, that is Brian Jones. Holy shit, and he has the hair! Well, yeah, the, the, the woods, like boy, the forest out back. So the forest out back, yeah. that's the hundred acre woods. Yeah, right. Because there's like that's this huge, yeah, 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 yeah. And then his dad puts a bowl on his head every mm-hmm. couple weeks and cuts his hair around the bowl. Yeah, to punish him. Brian's haircut. Yeah, and then he puts a dunce, a dunce cap on his head. Yeah. And makes him just walk out into the cold like, into the woods. Large women's sunglasses. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> Keith Richards wrote in his autobiography referring to Jones' estate. All right, we said, we said that, mate. Jones. We said it. Corey, I don't want to read the same thing again. All right. Mick and I didn't fancy the gig. <coughs> we drove down together and said, hey, Brian, it's all over, pal. Jones was subsequently replaced in the band by Mick Taylor, a former member of the Blues Breakers. Have you ever heard that group? Yeah. John it's like John Mayall? Yeah, or? John Mayall. Just a few weeks after his dismissal, Jones was discovered floating face down in the pool by Anna Wolin, his Swedish lover. Damn, his Swedish lover found him? Yeah. I always thought it was... Uh, John Lennon? <laughs> well, well yeah. what do we have here? 
<laughs> As a failure to Yoko, communicate. Let's, <laughs> a let's failure go for to the live. Morning swim. Oh, Brian's already beat us to the pool. He's doing laps. Brian. Brian. <laughs> Brian. He just keeps sinking Yoko, down. Yoko, get the authorities. <laughs> she managed to pull him out, but it was too late to do anything. Brian Jones was gone and a member of the Rock's Notorious 27 Club. Dang. So at this point, he's just found... Club. I think we had <laughs> yeah. talked about that. It was Jim Morrison, uh, yeah. Jimi Hendrix, and Janis Joplin. Janis Joplin. And yeah. so is uh, Kurt Cobain. He's 27, as well as That's Mr. Right. Brian Jones. That's right. Yeah. But So the last person... And so was Justin Bieber when he died. <sighs> he St. Bieber. His penis cut off and then his head cut off. Yeah, and the they, whole, that and was really rejoiced. twisted that they cut off his genitals and then <laughs> stuck it in his mouth. Yeah, and then they killed him. Funny stuff, though. I yeah, mean, they got their point across. Yeah, it was very artistic, very wry, and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a commentary. On the he's a. Uh, <laughs> like, we've we've talked about Justin Bieber before. Rest in peace. Do you think he's Bieber. reformed? Uh, like what? Because <laughs> he found like, he found Christ now. You oh. see, his, he has like you know the, the, the whole uh, yeah. the new tattoos and everything. Oh, he got a new tattoo yeah. like that uh, Motley Crue album. Yeah, cool. Well, I, he got cool. a new Jesus tattoo, so I mean, obviously, he's like down. Oh, with I guess G-O-D. he's. I guess he has morals. Then he's a good yeah. guy. Never mind, he has a tattoo. He's got cool ink, bro. Did the tattoo artist just put on a Rolling Stones album and say, "I'm gonna tattoo you"? Um, so. That's my joke for the night, and I hope that Craig, you guys liked it. Brian Jones. the Rolling Stones album. He's floating, face down yeah, in the pool. He's floating, he's blue. His hot Swedish lover. Yeah, Brian, sexy, young, hot. Swedish lover. I saw you lover. there for one second, and now <laughs> face down in the pool. Oh my god. I think more like he sound, I mean, when I think Swede, I think of uh, Mads Mikkelsen. So she just left it there? She She just let it bleed? <laughs> I really went. <laughs> that was a good went one. Fishing for that uh, one. You might as well turn it off, fucking right now, people. Yeah. That's as good as it's gonna get. Yeah, that's good. You just, stuff. you know, what is it? Teddy Williams hits it out of the fucking ballpark. Oh my god! Out of Fenway. Oh <laughs> Why did Eli Roth always sound like he was out of breath? <laughs> What, you, what movie? When he that? played the bear Jew. Oh yeah, yeah. The Glorious bastards. <laughs> that's right. Oh man. Yeah, the Twenty Seven Club. That's that's yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah, so Brian joined it. Yeah. I wonder who else was in it at the time. G- I don't think. I think he was the first one. He, he was, was the first one in. Yeah. So he kind of got there before it was cool. That's mm. even cooler. Get there before yeah. anybody else does, and when everybody's starting to show up, just See, leave. That's another. That's what I yeah, said. That's another clue that it's not a suicide. Yeah. Because. It wouldn't have been like this rock star way out to join the Twenty Seven Club. Yeah, it's pretty. I'm not, vol- I'm not trying to it's say a, it's like, a pretty lame way to die, yeah. dude. I'm definitely not saying the other people did that, but it would be a motive to do it. Yeah, like now. Uh, um, but I, I was going to make a joke about Tommy Lee's thing. pool, but I'm not going to. What happened there? Oh, well, Google's there for you. AC Peterson went swimming? <laughs> oh, no. Something. You did it for me. <laughs> All right. Given the turmoil in this particular death. <laughs> That's the difference. Not the, ju- Back not the death Jones. we were just talking Sorry. about. But this particular homicide. Given the turmoil. Tur- tor- turmoil. Oh, my God. <laughs> given the turmoil in his, <laughs> his life leading up to the event of July 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna drink some down with this termites? sarsaparilla and just just play with my mustache. Like, you're just a country man. I'm just a country bumpkin. Coors the banquet beer. <laughs> Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. What do you think Sam Elliott would sound like if he did uh, like audio porn audio. for the visually impaired? Well. Your vagina seems to be quite moist tonight. And I like that. She's like, yeah, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. Well. <laughs> well, kind of reminds me when I was out in the holler <laughs> with some friends. We were rustling cattle. I'm going to get my tumbleweed. They don't call up me. Up in the- your prairie. <laughs> 
<laughs> they don't call me the long horn for now. Oh my god. I don't got this mustache for <laughs> the nothing. Long horn. This is for mustache rides only, darling. <laughs> the holes <laughs> that those gophers would leave. Us lonely cowpokes would stick our peckers in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we got our jollies out. <laughs> oh my god. We were hustling <clears throat> cattle. Hustling cattle. <laughs> and we'd always drink Coors, <laughs> the banquet beer. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> uh, given the turmoil in his life. Wyatt, or the Earp, the oldest Earp brother. <laughs> Wyatt. Wyatt. <laughs> Get the hell over here. Given the turmoil in his life leading up to the event of July 3rd, speculation has yeah. raged over the years about whether Jones' passing was an incident or an oh. incident. What? Innocent accident. What am I saying? Oh, no, no, no. We know it's, <laughs> oh, we no, know no, it's no, not no, that. No, 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 Foul play. What do you <laughs> think? That, what did they report it? I mean, they find the guy dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exposure. Um, <laughs> exposure. How do you think uh, it went down in the coroner's report? Because now I yeah. know this shit. You know, it's, it's something. There's something, fishy. There's something to it. Uh, I'm no smelling collusion, man. Yeah. There's something going on here. Um. What do you think that? What, what do you think they wrote down the official death as? Oh, um... Drowning, perhaps? Suicide? Too much rocking. Hard rocking. Death by misadventure. Death by guitars. Death by misadventure? Yeah, have you ever heard of such a thing? Is that how, like, Christopher Robin died in the Winnie the Pooh books, too? Oh, oh man. Bother. No, I thought Piglet just went insane that one day, and it's that was it. Uh, yeah. And that was the end of the books, the too. The only one he spared was Eeyore, and Eeyore's just like, I've seen this before, like... He was like the, so the, the giant Indian man at the end of uh, one uh, uh, cuckoo's, yeah, one nest, cuckoo's Nest, nest yeah. where they, they lobotomize uh, <laughs> Christopher Robin. <laughs> yeah, they lobotomize him, and he just he uh, he he saves him. Yeah. Oh man, isn't he that picks how that up went? The thing and throws it. <laughs> the Something nest, like that. And him and Eeyore get out. Yeah, I think I might have puttered off at the end there, but yeah. you get the gist of it. Well, right. golly, Brian, we'll get out <laughs> of the pool. Why are you face down, not breathing? <laughs> Wendy, your husband has died. He's not doing lung exercises at the bottom yeah. of the pool. <laughs> That's a, just a reenactment of what happened at the scene of his death. Yeah. <laughs> One of those who suspected foul play was Anna, or... Wendy? Brian is still portrayed as a bitter, I worn out... I suspect foul play! <laughs> She's just pointing at a bird, like, over the fence. <laughs> it's a little, oh, it's a highbrow joke for you guys. All right. Bird over <laughs> Brian is still portrayed as a bitter, worn out. I better get in the snow cat and, and get out of here. Let's <laughs> get out of Worn out and depre- depressed man who was fired because of his drug habit and who died because he was drunk or high. Uh, she told, uh, No way. Uh, he was drunk or I <laughs> I've got drunk before and I've never <laughs> I've never drowned. Uh. Smile, you son of a bitch. I was just watching uh Robert <laughs> Shaw like a breakdown of he played like a uh like a Nazi general or like a tank commander or something. Oh really? Yeah, I'd never seen him in anything besides yeah, a drunk whaler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you were in a whaler. Uh, oh, can you go in there water the sharks in the water? Uh, you won't <laughs> see me wearing a life jacket. No, chief. <laughs> uh, I shark eyes. Eyes like a doll's eyes. Did you ever see uh, the taking of Pedlam 1, 2, 3? No. Is they, that the one They did a Denzel? remake of it with Denzel and John and Travolta, and John Travolta, Travolta was the villain. Ooh, he played Robert Shaw's guy. character. Bob Shaw? Yeah. And in, what's... In, oh, Robert Shaw was in the original? Yeah, yeah. Really? And so is Jerry Stiller. <laughs> actually. Really? He's cracking wise. Walter Matthau's in it. It's really good. Oh, uh, my and God. And all the guys, like all the, the robbers and stuff, they all have uh, colors for names. 
So it's like oh, Mr. Blue, Mr. Really? Red, Mr. Orange, Mr. Yale. Holy shit. That's where Tarantino got it from. QT? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's amazing. A little trivia. Yeah. All right, back to the case. Oh. This is the important stuff, Greg. Shark eyes. Wendy went on to point the finger at the handyman, Frank Thorigood. Oh. Head of the bone. Frank that was Thorigood. Frank Thorigood. Who had been hired to finish up some odd jobs around the musician's home. Odd job from GoldenEye? Yeah. <laughs> he was there? He had been hired to hire an odd job. Oh my god. And there god. was a giant misunderstanding. <laughs> I thought you wanted me to hire odd jobs, not do <laughs> odd jobs. Oh my god. Woo! So Man, who was... that went way over my head. So, yeah. I got convoluted. <laughs> okay, so... so... So, uh, she, Wendy and his, or Anne or Anne, Wendy uh, Brian's girlfriend Brian's pointed girlfriend. a finger at the, their handyman, Frank Thorogood. It was him! <laughs> Who had been hired. Are they to, sure it was Frank Thorogood or Willem Dafoe? They could have. Oh. Actor Willem Dafoe. <laughs> he was, our reports say that he was in the area at the time. Have you seen a. Uh, the funny thing is, Frank Thorogood looks just like the Willem actor Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. Hey, Peter. <laughs> Hey, Brian, let me <laughs> fix your garden. <laughs> hey, hey, you got some paint cans <laughs> outside in front of your house. Let me throw them away for you. What? He's saying that to Brian? Yeah. He's hey, like, Brian, where's Mary Jane? He's <laughs> like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to kill that man. <laughs> there was a fire fight. All right. Oh my god. <laughs> and... Hey, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Green Goblin. <laughs> so, we have not been able to eliminate, as a possible sus- suspect, the Green Goblin. No. He could be. Cause are you already Mr. talking about the character? Or are we talking about the actor? Or You know... You know what? <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> That's not is, important right you're, now. You're focusing what on am I saying? Part. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, Mr. Thorogood yeah, yeah, yeah. had an alter ego is what I'm saying. He mm. moonlighted, if you will. Oh my night. god, some kind of, he has uh, some kind secret of experimental technology. Uh, now we're on the same wavelength. They're there together, and he wore bub. A green mask and he had this um, And this is the late sixties. This winged like board that he could fly <laughs> on. And for weapons. They thought maybe some type of like grenade or hand grenade thing. Uh-huh. He's like, I don't know, design them to make them look like pumpkins. What up, pumpkins? <laughs> Fucking pumpkins. And then they'll do it that way. <laughs> what did pumpkins ever do to anybody? Yeah. I think they're hey, pretty. Hey, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're a pretty Where's good design. Harry Jane. Your Uncle Ben was a pussy. <laughs> Jeez, Green Goblin. So the terrible news sent the London scene and the world beyond yeah. into a period of deep mourning. The entire world was mourning. Joan's old bandmates were in the studio recording when they got <laughs> They were the, the only news. ones not mourning. <laughs> yeah, they were <laughs> they kept recording. sleeping it off from the night before. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, there was nothing. She she pointed the finger. Oh, rather. Oh, yeah, excuse good. me. Yeah, yeah. She, so, she was talking about Frank. Um, uh, we're going back a little bit. Blink of an eye. She says, yeah. I don't know if Frank meant to kill Brian. Maybe it was horse right. play in the pool that right. went wrong. Hmm. But she thinks it was... But I knew yeah. all along he did not die a natural involved. death or death wow. by shenanigans or misadventure as the There was no misadventures. Said. We walked around in a maze in the snow for a while, but that's it. <laughs> so, uh, yes, as I, as I said, as I said, the terrible yeah. news sent the London scene and the world beyond in a period of deep mourning. Joan's old bandmates didn't give a hoot or a holler. But they were told about it in a recording studio. <laughs> when they got the news, and as Richards wrote, there exists one minute and 30 seconds of us recording. I don't know why a Stevie Wonder song, interrupted by the phone call telling us of Brian's death. Wow. So it is recorded of them uh, getting the news, which is kind of nutty. Really? I never realized that, yeah. That's crazy. Just two days later, the Stones carried on with a planned concert held at Hyde Park. Right. You can see this on YouTube. Advertisement much? It's amazing. Hey, our ex-guitar player just died. Why don't you come over to Hyde Park and check us out? Come out and watch us play. It's going to be a good gig. 
We already replaced him. <laughs> he's got, you ain't got to worry about it, mate. It's Mick Taylor, mate. He's got right. a play, it's going to be brilliant. Didn't I tell you he's a blues breaker? John Mayo. Ever heard of it? Ever heard of him? They repositioned... The blues breaker. This... <laughs> this gig... <laughs> yeah, that gig. What about that gig? This gig... They were gigging at this point. They were gigging hard. They were going all up and down the UK, gigging yeah. from one side from all East the way. East Sussex to West Sussex. All the way to and Ditka. back again. Back again. Ditka to Slough to Liverpool. So, yeah, they they were like, hey, this is a tribute to that guy that just died. You guys might yeah. have known him. We knew him pretty good, too. Two, three, four. Oh, my God. Well, they just played board and run. No, um... <laughs> Why would they? <laughs> just, just like born in the USA. Oh my god! Uh, Jagger read a piece of my Percy Shelley poem. Uh, yeah. What is it? Adonis. Mm. And he's like, dude, is you guys gotta cringy? check this video out. It's is it a little worth cringy. Out? It's a little bit like Adonis. I don't know. He's he is trying. Like I think he he looks like he cares but it's it's very cringy it's like i know everybody wanted to rock but a chat is he got? i got a poem called it's honest yeah that's how it is and for it's brian like, that's like exactly what it's like and then he's like oh, oh come on now like quiet down i gotta do i oh, know you're just about yeah. to peak on your lsd and everybody's like blazing you're crazy and trippy and, dream and, but oh yeah you, it's psychedelic dream i want to share that with you i know it's really far but out i gotta right tell now. A poem <laughs> for Brian, right, Brian Jones, guitar. So he read a piece aloud. And come on, are you in the back? All right, I'm not going to finish unless you be quiet. He's seriously doing that kind of shit. I, <laughs> I'll like start a, at the beginning if 50, you keep making 50, me... 50,000 people yeah. in front of him. And tell I'm going to go long, back again and read you Adonis back again. A long fucking poem. Everybody's like, okay... Uh, so you read it before flashy, hundreds correct? of wet butterflies that were le- released into the summer air. Well, I heard a lot of the butterflies the actually butterflies. died in the in the cages or wherever they really? were they had them. So when they threw them out, they just like fell on the ground. Oh my god! So there's god. just hundreds of white butter dead butterflies, a bunch of butterflies that him. went the way of Brian Jones. Ah, too soon. All right, so they were released into the summer air. The Tom butterflies, Petty? not his soul. Tom Petty is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Oof, okay, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Days later, on July 10th, 1969, year all of our Lord. All the butterflies Lord, came back to life. <laughs> they, all re- they were all resurrected like our Lord and Savior. And they named Lord them all Savior. Brian Jones. Uh, Jones was laid to rest at a ceremony at... Or so we are told. At, at uh, Clareham Cemetery. Clareham Cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> I just tried to sound as dignified as yeah, possible. that's very dignified. I hate, I hate the, the posh, like, old British people. The, 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 that um, the Simpsons always make fun of, where it's uh, uh, they they kind of trail off to. Uh, well, 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 I, I don't know, darling. It's 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 just the most peculiar thing. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You know, it's yeah, like yeah, they're very prissy. Uh, yeah, I just imagine the guy proper. on the cover of the New Yorker. But yeah. uh, uh, but uh, I just bring it up because I've heard very Jagger. Freeman. I've heard I've heard Jagger talk like that. Oh, and I've no. heard them, you know, talk. Uh, I'm very straight wise. I'm straight wise too. <laughs> <laughs> so Bill Wyman and Charlie Watts were the only members of the Stones in attendance at the funeral. Oh my god. I'm too busy, alright? Right? It's me, Jumping Jack Flash. I'm too bloody busy. Come on, man. That's pretty messed up. I mean, he the guy did yeah. start the group, and they're just like, fuck it. Yeah. You don't give a shit that he died. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm sure that's something that the the older you get, you're like, eh, maybe I shouldn't have done it like that. Yeah, I bet. I just because I mean, you know, they were just doing that. like Stone's business, and it's like that can wait <clears throat> for your friend that just like you just fired from the band and shit. Yeah. But yeah. Jeez Louise. That's crazy. Well. Yeah, so we have a lot of suspects so far. There's a lot of suspects. We have the Green Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> we had, I think, Ed Harris. Ed Harris, Wendy Torrance. Wendy Torrance, uh, Willem Dafoe. Uh, I think... Uh, Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. I couldn't kill him. I was enjoying ice coke. 
Coors, <laughs> the banquet beer. Halfway across <laughs> the globe. <laughs> <laughs> that cool Rocky Mountain water does the trick every every time. Thank you, Mr. Elliot. That was so eloquently put. As we're we're waiting for uh, the guests to get here, some other yeah. guests to arrive. I There's mean, this been is some, but this is very spooky. Yeah. It's been the whole time we're talking about. I mean, we're talking about a murder, so yeah, that's spooky. But I mean, it's, it's like it's really dark in here with the candlelight. Yeah. There's fog. Well, it doesn't help that I just tr- I just I the cut the breakers. Yeah. Did I, I didn't mention and that. You cut before. the brakes in my car too. Yeah. Well, reason. I thought. I yeah. <laughs> you cut the breakers, so we yeah. solved that. We don't take a break <laughs> until there's a break in the case, right? What is that? It's from Face Off, man. A break Sean Archer, in until the there's case. a break in this fucking case, oh we're solving it tonight, Craig, this crime. Yeah. The Brian Jonestown Massacre. Yeah. He's a great band. And we're going to get to that, people. But, yeah. s- but first, I'm going to tell you a little story. Do you think that... One of the members of the Beatles could have gotten jealous of the Stones and murdered Brian Jones. To I think slow their momentum. I think realistically, all no, of them I probably didn't do had it. A I didn't. <laughs> all of them realistically, what? They all realistically had a motive. <laughs> yeah. Because. No, I didn't. First of all, uh, first off, I'm sure somebody was sleeping with George's girlfriend at the time because I know religion. Doesn't. People were partial to do, be doing that at the you know in, in the sixties. Oh, so that right there. Joel, it could have been a crime of passion. <laughs> I don't think John would have killed him because John had uh, Yoko. He had the love of his life. Yoko, my love will turn you on. It could be anybody. <laughs> could be Yoko, maybe. Yeah. This is like a scene out of uh, David Fincher's Zodiac. Yeah. With one... What's yeah. his name? Jake Gyllenhaal? No, that's not his name. Another guy. Isn't he in Zodiac? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, who is the other like dude in that? RDJ. It is right. Robert, Robert Downey Jr. Jr. Tony Stark. You know, it's sad. I bring that up, and I bring up the the, the Zodiac case because yeah. some cases they're not solved. Yeah, they're cold. So that's another suspect, the Zodiac killer. Yeah. That's crazy. And that Jake Gyllenhaal crazy. too. Realistically, Jake Realistically, Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal could, could have done it there too. I think he maybe. Well, would have been didn't months. that Donnie Darko? He would have even been alive. I think right? that wormhole from Donnie Darko oh, could, have been that. could have gone back quite easily. Movies are real, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's real life, right? Okay. In this it's French Jake Spanish Gyllenhaal. villa, it's all real. Yeah, man. it warps time and space. Yeah, in this French Spanish. And villa. we can never leave this. Place. We haven't been out for years. Yeah, no, it's no. so. Sprawling though, it's like uh, Beetlejuice when they go outside their house, but there's just a desert there. Yeah, and a sandworm. <laughs> crawling, that's pretty much how it is here. Yeah. There di- was an underground bunker we used to record out of, but yeah. that's neither here nor we there. Escapes. Yeah. Right. Season of the witch. Season of the witch. Yeah. So you know we're just we're we're throwing out the the various mm. suspects and and try and have pin motives on yeah. and stuff. Our whole wall is covered with bulletin boards, and there's a picture that you'll be able to see. Yarn this is pointing. This is ridiculous. Like, yeah, we have connecting the dots of different <clears throat> suspects and places. And weapons there's several. Uh, you know, there's jars of piss everywhere. We yeah. haven't left. Yeah, we've become. We fill uh, them up. We drink them down. Fill them back up again. Fill them back up again. But hey, say lobby, you know. Anyway, <laughs> it must be the season of the witch because I'm talking about drinking piss. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we're just putting those people out there. We are individually. We both have a notebook. We're still like, yeah, filling out the final notes and connecting <clears throat> all the dots, filling in the gaps, crossing T's, dotting I's. Yeah, and we're know, cashing checks and breaking necks. Yeah, as it were, sucking tits, fucking clits, and taking shits. Yeah. And then but, we're going to come to our really, own conclusions. Because yes. we both have kind of some theories that conflict a little bit. And that's the thing, yeah. Uh, what this is, this is a teaser, people, really. So we're going yeah. to talk about a few things, and then we're going to we're gonna compare notes. Yeah, and, and you know... Hope, we're very secretive people. 
Maybe something will come up yeah. along the way. Maybe you'll like will all jostle something Get loose in your your head. Yeah, and you'll like wiggle something loose in mine. I'm like that guy. What was that? Was that in Hannibal? The the this is my design. <laughs> oh yeah, that guy? It, um, because he would Will? like yeah. go in, yeah, the Will, Detective Will. In Hannibal the series, and he would go like into a room and kind of like almost go into slow mo and like sense what happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of like that. <laughs> 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 you sound like you might be on the spectrum, Craig. Yeah. All we're right. Doing that, we really. Now I want to before we uh, before we solve the big case. I want to talk about a segment that is near and dear to our hearts. And I, Corey, if you don't have the music set up one more time. Yeah. We have a young, inexperienced producer. A young, supple chap, Corey. Supple boy. So this is Creepy Crawly Cruise in the World. It's like our Cruise in the World segment, but it's, it's a special edition of it for Halloween. Now, Craig, we usually tell a dark tale from around the world. Yeah. And tonight is, you know... Even even darker. It's even darker. It's creepy and crawly. Yeah. Now, we have uh, several to choose from. We have cannibals, we have vampires, we have werewolves. We have snake bites. Snake by, or suicide by snake. I almost said snake by suicide. Snake by suicide. I guess that's if somebody threw a snake at you as they were driving past. I'm not sure. And the snake would... Die, kill itself or something? Oh, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. I want to talk about real vampires, Craig. Really? Real ones? I'm talking about ah, uh, real Pattinson? monsters. Yeah. Yeah, he some... he shines. He's handsome. In more ways, more ways than one. I mean, his acting skills are like off the charts. Second to none. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> we're just On gonna, that note, we're just. Gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I guess we should end the show. If that. we're just going to talk about Fat Cock Rob Patterson all night. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, just, this could just be oh any other... God. This could just be any other yeah. episode, perhaps. Oh, man. <laughs> all right. You know, there's a coffin in one of the rooms <clears throat> in this villa, French-Spanish villa that we record in. Mm-hmm. And the coffin, I saw it shaking earlier. And then... Like, I'm afraid that there might be, like, it might open up and you'll see, like, a skeleton hand opening it. That's what I'm worried about tonight. (laughs) (laughs) That's very descriptive. thinking about it a lot. It's very descriptive. It might happen. What what type of phobia would that be? You walk into a room and there's a skeleton hand. (laughs) It's very common. It's very common. It's very common. It's very common. With clown. It's very common for people who keep a coffin in their house mm. that they're worried that a skeleton hand will open it. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, and usually they it's walk that, into the room. You know, why keep the coffin out so much? <laughs> what are, what are you, oh, why keep the coffin out? Yeah. Holy shit, I've never thought of that. Yeah. I could just put the coffin somewhere else. Yeah, maybe put it in the garage with all the camping stuff. Oh my god. I don't know. I guess so. Alright, so we're going to talk about real life vampires. No more skeleton hands? <laughs> Back to reality. Whoop, there goes gravity. No, these are vampires. A real life vampire scare has killed at least eight people as of Friday in Malawi, although officials are attempting to reassure villagers that the rumors of bloodsuckers they're not true. Uh, that's Malawi what they do. They <laughs> that's sure. what they always say the government that's what the government will always tell them. you. And then pretty soon watch. I've seen this a million times. Uh-huh. Van Helsing shows up in this town. Yes. And then what? Why is he there? What's yeah. their excuse for that? Yeah. Obviously to bullshit. take out the Dark Lord and Savior yeah. that's hiding underneath the sure. town that it's nobody like, knows about. It's like Castlevania. It's very similar. Trevor Belmont. Great franchise. Yeah. Malawi, a country with a strong belief in witchcraft mm. throughout rural, rural areas of the country is taking vampire rumors quite literally. Oh, wow. And well, some... It's like, so the, is the logic just like, well, hell, we believe in fucking witches. Yeah. And people are like, yeah? Yeah, vampire, I think, sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. <clears throat> I thought you were going to say mummy or wolf man. But no, yeah, no, no, no. Vamp- why not? Anything. Oh, well, oh, just just <clears throat> wait. So there's a strong belief uh, yeah. in witchcraft, um, and vampire rumors, they take them quite literally. Oh, and wow. some have become 
killing people that are believed to be bloodsuckers. Oh, it's like the witch trials. Yeah, the supposed outbreak of hungry bloodsuckers. Why do they keep calling them bloodsuckers? Yeah. Has caused mob violence, leaving at least wow. eight dead since September. Jeez. Really? In an attempt to dissuade rumors, Malawian president... Uh, I can't pronounce that. Has also been it's like visiting. Jimmy, no, it's uh, like Williams. Yeah, yeah. It's Peter Mutharika. That's pretty good. Peter Gabriel. Peter Gabriel too has also been visiting it's different so parts. Peter Gabriel too. Vampire Weekend. Check them out, people. Yeah. Oh, that's unrelated. What we're yeah. Like, what a yeah. weird connection there. Yeah. Vampire Weekend. That's Ezra, if you're listening, <clears throat> you are. Out. So the uh, uh, Mr. President tear down this wall, has been visiting Trump. different parts of the country to prevent deaths of innocent people. So where where is this country? Uh, Malawi. Is it Africa? I believe it's in Malawi, Africa. Africa. The, so he's visiting people and just... He's just going like from major city to city and being like, all right, stop killing folks because vampires oh. aren't real. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, yeah. the, 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 the crimes are, are so below. So he's being kind of level-headed. Yeah, the vampire rumors are believed to have stemmed from neighboring country Mozambique, although no one is entirely sure of their origins. Oh, they think whatever it is is coming over their little, their little border from Mozambique? Yeah, like, uh... Fucking Mozambique, man, don't, you know? <laughs> we hear about this stuff all I'm... the time with you guys. <laughs> Sneaking over borders and drinking blood. <laughs> Taking our jobs. Taking our jobs. Uh, they're just spreading the so rumors. <laughs> this is, yeah. They're just spreading rumors and they're making people live in fear. People are living in fear just because of them. Mm. Uh, in Malawi, second largest city, mobs torched a 22 year old epileptic man oh in uh, Chilika. And then another man was stoned to death after being sus- suspected of being a bloodsucker. Well, vampires are always having seizures. So I can see why the epileptic guy got accused. <laughs> yeah, he kind of. Why is he having a seizure? I don't know. He's probably gonna suck our blood. <laughs> Kill him. God, there's no happy ending or anything. I just. They just I mean, okay, yeah. so like, like, let's just think for a second. Is it so, a government cover up? Yes. yes. I mean, there's vampires out there. Going. Alex Jones joins the program. They're not telling you there are bloodsuckers out there right now at the stroke of midnight. <laughs> and unless Van Helsing and oh his crew, God. you know, they they get yeah. together, right, and they get yeah. crosses. Yeah, tiki torches. The Dark Lord is not going to go down without a fight, people. All right, no. he's a demon. They're yeah. demons. It's true, Alex. Hillary Clinton is a demon. <laughs> Glenn Danzig is a demon. Glenn Danzig is a demon. I saw him shape shift one time. He took the form of a bat <laughs> and then a snare beast, people. A Thanagarian snare beast? He is not human. He is not of this world, people. <laughs> he's from the planet Thanagar. And he's coming for you. Before you know it, people, <laughs> Glenn Danzig's going to come to your city. In Malawi. In Malawi. And your daughter's going to be missing, and your dog's going to be pregnant. <laughs> Write it down right now, Infowars.com. Infowars.com. Male vitality, 50% off, people. Oh, my God. I'm Is so ha- strong. A Halloween sale. Must, I'll kick someone's ass. Must be dialing <laughs> right now. Must be dialing. Infowars. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I remember Halloween, too. And there's vampires. There's UFOs, too. It's a coincidence that they're here on Halloween, though. Beelzebub is real, people, all right? I have the facts. I have the forms right here in front of me. Nobody will believe me. They're right here. Listen. Those are forms. The devil put aside for me to quote the late Freddie Mercury. Get behind me, Satan. Who was also a gay lizard person. (laughs) Turning the frogs gay. That's the Alex Jones theory. Yeah, that's the Alex Jones minute. That's the theory. Yeah. That's the conspiracy. We're brought to you by Infowars. Yeah. And now, a word from our real sponsor, mm. Chesterfield Cigars. We have cigars now? From our new spokesman, former governator, Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh. Because after dinner, everyone ought to have a cigar. So, I tried it. Well... The rest is history. 
I'm still smoking stogies. I love it. And he introduced me to something really good. And I know now the next question. Knowing you, uh -huh. uh, being the interviewer that you are, yeah. digging in deep all the time, I do. you will say I do. now, what does your wife think about that? Yeah. Let me ask you something. That was my next question. When my wife's father has introduced me to Stogis, what is she going to say? She's not gonna say my father made a mistake because her father never makes a mistake. Yeah, so therefore, it is okay. I can smoke stogies around her. I can smoke stogies in my house. First of all, because <laughs> her father introduced me to stogies, and second of all, because I'm a stud. I'm ballsy. I don't take no shit from anyone. I smoke my stogie anywhere I want. I don't have to find a hideout place like you. <laughs> as long as my wife's father's okay with it. <laughs> Thank you, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Thank you. He doesn't take shit off anybody. He does not. <laughs> We're going to get right into it, Craig. Now, yeah. one of the layers to the onion called Brian the Jones. tragic death, <clears throat> called the tragic death? No, come on. I need another drink. Oh. I've been up all night, man. Who do we I'm have? I'm tense. Or who's the liquor sponsor of the show? Uh, Seagram 7. Yeah, Seagram have a drink. This is just wine now. I have or, one of those me, glasses Prudow, rather. with a, a ball-shaped ice cube in it. Mm -hmm. And then you pour, like, the liquor in there. I had one of so those. It's really cool. And... But it kind of weighed down the glass. Well, and I'm I cultured, so that's the difference. Huh. I, uh, <laughs> I shattered the glass... Yeah. And uh, there's glass in, in anger. There's glass everywhere, right? And yeah. I thought, oh my god, I got glass in the ice... What am I going to do, right? Yeah. About, you swallowed it? <clears throat> Luckily, I had some blue curacao, right? Blue curacao! <laughs> John, what, what's John his name? John Taffer. John Taffer. He's, He's a, a friend of the Taffer, show. Friend of the show. Uh, from, uh, from True TV's <laughs> Bar Rescue. <laughs> Caesar Milan's. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he, he was, you, you have to have the blue curacao. Yeah, to help find It's a priority, <laughs> yeah. People watch Bar Rescue, you yeah. know what we're talking about. Really, yeah. The blue fucking curacao. And we're going to talk about Brian Jonestown Massacre. Yeah. A <clears throat> uh, band that both you and I, I'd say we enjoy. Yeah. I think we can... I, I enjoy... I've, I've tapped a toe or two mm. to these tunes. And you don't tap a toe very often. That's real. That's from my heart to you people. It's, it's kind of my business what I tap my toe to, what I tap my dick on, etc., etc. And I'm telling you, Brian Johnstown Master. Now, I think the that. most people would say that the mastermind, <laughs> the master yeah. high, mastermind behind uh, Brian Johnstown would be Anton Newcomb. Yeah, Anton, the great, legendary Anton Newcomb. Uh, and for those that haven't seen it, there's a documentary that came out in the early 2000s yeah. called Dig. Dig, about baby. both uh, the Brian Jonestown Massacre and the Dandy the Warhols. Dandy Warhols yeah. They were rival bands, sort of yeah. like the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. No, uh, we were friends. <laughs> uh, it, it's like that if uh, neither one of them was famous, or only like the Beatles exploded. <laughs> yeah, neither one. <laughs> or, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a, the most famous music rival that nobody's ever heard of. Yeah. But it's a... Uh, and uh, another key player, Matt Hollywood. Matt Hollywood. The amazingly na stage named Matt Hollywood. And they had a, a lot of great members of Brian Jonestown. Yeah, including Matt Hollywood. Including Matt Hollywood. And so then yeah, they had their the entire, tambourine player. Wasn't it the entire band, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, every single member? Uh, was a former Brian Jonestown? I believe so, yeah. I oh, thought that's what I heard. So there's a lot of... Because they have like 25 former members or more. And then, yeah, they had a full-time tambourine uh, virtuoso. What was his Man. name? Like Paul like or Pat? Hey, Paul! It was Joel. It was Joel? It was seriously Joel, yeah. I remember? was way off. Yeah. Joel, and I'm not talking about Joel with, uh, and the adventures with Eric. <laughs> which we'll get into at some point on this show. <clears throat> if Kellen ever gets on, he can tell the story. And that uh, talk about hot sauce. I just want everybody really? to just, uh, <laughs> oh, I feel you, I feel you. Everybody just take a second. Yeah, and enjoy Brian Johnson. Smoke him if you got him. Yeah, uh, 
this is a really cool band. And they're the Brian Jonestown. Now, obviously, this this name would be synonymous with a, a certain event that happened. Yeah. The Jonestown Massacre. And they are influenced by Brian Jim Jones. Jones. And then also, yeah, Jim Jones and the Jonestown Massacre. The teachings of Jim Jones. Now, for those that haven't, uh, they don't know about Jonestown, uh, have, have you seen the pictures and everything? The I've seen some pictures. Uh, uh, there was uh, the, the cult. The Pornhub, Jonestown. Backslash Jonestown. Oh, no. Oh, Jonestown. oh, no. <laughs> uh, cut that part out. I feel like the de- devil's Edit gotten in here. you, boy. Oh, my God. Well, you have sympathy. <laughs> For the devil. God damn it, you got me there. Woo! When you're Make right, you're right. Rolling Stones, shout them out. You've Jeez. been begging for a banquet all night. <laughs> I've been holding on to that one. I totally spaced on what I was going to say. You know what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> was it about Jonestown? Yeah. And the sweet little boy named Jim Jones? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just a dream in his heart, a dollar in his pocket. <laughs> Open a prayer and a dream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know that there's a. I'll, I'll just talk for one moment. <laughs> I peaky, bro. So you're fucking peaking. Here, Craig. Yeah. Here, have this. Have this tablet of Bali. It's, we've been drinking these like. Uh, what do you call those like beer mugs with the cap on top? Stein? A stein with, uh, full of this mysterious spooky <coughs> liquid that, like, smoke. Like, it's almost like dry ice. Yeah. I think it's some type of potion. It's been bubbling out of cauldron. And we cooked it in a cauldron. It's delicious. <coughs> I think that I, this is, uh, gillyweed that we're is enjoying it? right now. I made some butter beer. And some butter beer? Yeah. Is that Halloween or no? You're a wizard, alright. <coughs> were you ever into those movies? Um, No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he had like a lightning bolt birthmark on his nutsack or something like that, and and the guy that you're not supposed to say his name, he saw Harry's nuts and and uh, saw the lightning bolt and knew that it was his like arch rival or bitter arch enemy, and so he took a fucking magic wand and slit his throat. It's just a classic Wait, wizard tale. That's a classic boy meets girl tale. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I it I'm really went like that. Meets world a lot too, which is a lot like Harry Potter. Oh, that sounds like a except with Topanga. <clears throat> that Mister Feeney, he was a dish. Yeah. It's crazy how like the most the wisest character in television history was Mister Feeney. Was not an owl, but a man. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! So the Jonestown Massacre, Craig. Get yeah. serious. You gotta get serious. On November 18th, 1978, in what became known as the Jonestown Massacre, more than 900 members of an American cult called the People's Temple died in a mass suicide murder under the direction of their Ah, leader, Jim Jones. Jones. The mass suicide murder took place at the so-called Jonestown Settlement in the South African... or the South African nation of Guana. Um... Jones had founded what became the People's Temple in Indiana in the 1950s, then relocated his congression to California in the 60s. Uh, actually, in uh, parts of San Francisco, too. Really? Yeah. Where he, he moved? Yeah, when he was in California in the 60s. So when the actual massacre did happen, there, was, there were family members in San Francisco. So it, it hit like the paper there. Which is crazy, you know, yeah. just like halfway across the world, there's... These people killing themselves, and then there's, like... They were from San Francisco? Yes. Or, oh. Yes, because, uh, oh, yeah, they all, they're starting, so they're starting to travel. He's, like, he's starting to build his congregation, and they're getting kicked out of city and city. But they're, they're starting uh, to, like, amass people. Uh, wow. So, yeah, the People's Temple in Indiana, they were kicked out in the 50s, then relocated to the California in the 60s. In the 70s, following negative media attention, the powerful controlling preacher moved with some 1,000 of his followers... To a Guyanese jungle. So you have to be, I mean... You have to be Guyanese to go You there. have to be Guyanese to go into that jungle, obviously. Um, Simply. No, that. but, you know, if, you, if a thousand people are just following you around, I mean... Yeah. You can be crazy, obviously, but it's like... You, you just have the word of God. Is, is that what it is, right? I mean, yeah. it's just... Don't the Brian Jonestown Massacre band 
Don't they have a song called The Ballad of Jim Jones? Yeah. And we're, well, we were definitely going to listen to that after Okay, this. that's super funny. Um, yeah, I know. I wonder, like, it's on some... I was going to say Charlie Manson, but I guess it's a lot different than that <laughs> because this was, like, so fucking violent. Yeah. And this guy was... Like, what... I don't know the whole story yet. Like, you oh, know let's I mean? just keep going. Like, yeah. So the preacher moved a thousand of his followers to the Guyanese jungle where he promised they would establish a utopian community. So he didn't know what he was doing. He just kept going, no. like, making curves to keep it going. On November 18th, 1978, a United States representative, Leo Ryan, who had just gone to Jonestown to investigate claims of abuse, was okay. murdered with four members of his delegation by the Jonestown gunmen. So what had happened is that they, so this, the uh, <clears throat> United States um, representative, uh, so he had come in and he, had, he was there to survey what was going on in Jonestown. Yeah. And people were coming up to him and being like, we want to fucking leave. Like, we want to go. They won't let us leave. Really? And passing them notes and stuff. And so they go out, they go to the runway because they're out in the fucking Guyanese jungle. <laughs> right. It's hot. We previously established We've established our setting, people. Come on. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> we have a Guyanese jungle map up on the wall that yeah. we refer to. I knew it was going to come in handy one yeah. day. All right. So, the, yeah, so they go out to the, the airstrip because there's only one way to fucking get out of there, right? Because they're just yeah. in the middle of the jungle. And his followers follow them out there. Was it like Elias in uh, Platoon? Yeah, yeah, Running exactly. Running out of the jungle, being yeah. shot down. You think you're a water walker, Elias? All right. So um, the followers are like chasing after the ones that are trying to escape? It, uh, just or No, just the representatives. Oh, just that And guy? there's a camera crew and everything that went out there. So oh. they just got fucking uh, tore down with, with guns and everything. Really? And the representative got killed. Uh, and everybody else just ran out into the jungle to hide. Because they were, oh. they were, because the his All followers the were trying him? to kill them. All the people with uh, oh. the representatives. Yeah, who were still, who oh, were still wow. alive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the same day, Jones ordered his followers to ingest poison laced punch while armed guards stood by. Wow. And so, some of the most horrible parts of that would be that we we don't have to listen to it. I mean, if you really yeah. want to go out there and listen to, it, there, there are recordings of of what was happening. Of like when the. When they were drinking the poison? Yeah. Shit? Really? Yeah. He just fucking... He pulled his iPhone out, clicked voice memo, hit record, and just... It went right listening. up to the, the cloud. So it recorded till it was like filled out memory. <laughs> sent no, it to the he, it's like, it's, it's really the frightening. And I, is find my iPhone. I saw the do- uh, documentary on it. It was like, come on, people. They're coming to get us. They oh, were wow. going to find freedom in heaven. Help your children. Release your, your children. So there's wow. parents... Uh, feeding their children uh, poison so that the, they'll wow. all die so that they'll go to heaven or th- these people will like come and take them away. And, wow. a, and a lot of people, when that was starting to happen, they ran out into the jungle too and just hit out there for like days. Some of the other jumps <clears throat> down. The yeah, and then when you yeah. see the pictures, um, it's just, as far as, like, as far as the eye can see, it's just bodies. Wow. It's, it's, it's fucking, ugh. Yeah, it's pretty insidious. And the Kool-Aid man's there, bursting through the wall. But this time he says, oh no. I like to, I like to fill in just really funny stuff. I like you Keep because you, you like to fill That was it. fun. You, that was definitely fun. Right. I mean, that one, some of them don't land. That one, yeah, that one, that one hit the target, like right in the middle. Yeah. That was good. Live studio audience is cracking up. They're cracking up. Corey just had the belly laugh for some yeah, reason. Corey. Whenever you start talking about mash casualties, he's just... <laughs> yeah. I've never seen him so happy. He's, he's working the boards tonight. Yeah. yeah. I think he turned one of the, the dials up pretty loud. Because he's yeah. laughing so hard. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, Brian Jonestown Massacre. Super cool band. Go check them out. Yeah. They're like hippie, psychedelic rock, but they're from like the 90s, 2000s. And as you can imagine, Brian, the Brian Jones part, you can tell they're like huge fans of early Stones. Mm-hmm. And if you see that documentary, Dig, this lead singer-songwriter guy, Anton Newcomb, is out of his fucking mind. 
He's like really a really talented songwriter, composer guy, but yeah, he's just out of his fucking mind. He's out of his mind and change that. he's definitely on uh, lots of Jeez. drugs and yeah. He has that and French girlfriend. His when he's guitar. like this, when he's like this, he uh. takes his head off and then he just does not want to talk to anyone. Oh my god! Remember that? Well, you know why? Because someone broke my fucking sitar, man. Dude, Anton, no one broke your fucking sitar. Fuck you, man. You broke my sitar. That's the last string you broke with me. No pun intended. You, that's it. Fuck you, man. Fucking sitar. Fuck you. Now, Craig, we usually do a segment. My called... sitar. All right, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I dug it. Oh, <laughs> uh, take my breath away. Oh. It's a nice, a little different. Oh, is it? What is it this time? Uh, tingle up my spine. <laughs> That's a stretch. Uh, <laughs> skeleton my breath away. There we go. Now, Craig, we usually talk about Matt Love here. Yeah. In the show. A segment called Take My Breath Away. Yeah. But you told me you had a, a different name for it tonight. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> it, was a, it was a swing and a miss earlier. Yeah. Right, Tim. But, uh, take my breath away forever. As in you're dead. <laughs> As in it's really spooky. L- yeah, no, I, I, uh... Because it's spooky. I feel you. So, uh, th- I don't, I don't even know, some of these stories when I, when I... W- this is look usually at... a segment about love. Yeah, but this is, now it's just spooky. Consumed... So now it's spooky love. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's a clear distinction. Oh, wait. It's terrifying. Take oh, my breath away. Hold up. <coughs> Woo. <Woo-hoo. laughs> now, Craig. We usually call that segment "Take My Breath Away." Yeah. But what are we calling it this time? Terrifying. Take my breath away. Thank you. Perfect. Woo. Woo. Spooky. Now, usually it's a love story. Not now. Not this instant. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. It's more of a terrifying love This story. is terrifying, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is I, it a lot like Brian and his girlfriend, Wendy? Brian yeah, Jones? very much so. This is just this is just wrong. This is just yeah. sick and wrong. Okay. Consumed by jealousy, Russian cannibal couple embrace in sick picture. I just claim... Okay, so, so um, <laughs> they've been pickling oh people. Uh... They've been killing women in a in a jealous rage. They've been pickling people. Is his name Peter Piper? <laughs> <laughs> Natalia, I'll just say Natalia and Dimitri confessed to murdering oh the waitress God. after Natalia accused of trying to bed her husband. So the waitress tried to have sex with Natalia's husband. So uh, they did the only smart so thing. She, so she ate her. <laughs> we have to eat. We have, have to, to eat, eat the eat evidence. Her. Oh my god. An eerie new photo shows the Russian cannibal couple kissing as forensic experts claim pickled human remains of their last victim were found in a glass jar in their fridge. Wow. The sinister snap was revealed after it emerged. The suspect, Natalia, 42, had complained. She had been mocked by fellow prisoners in jail with regular taunts of, Did you eat enough human meat? Come on, that's sad. That's really uncalled for. They shouldn't make fun of Natalia just because she wants to eat human meat. That's, you know, that's her prayer. Yeah. Um, she's like, she's just like, yeah, or no. I want more. <laughs> well, um, this, is, uh, this is one of the jars. They found a, wow. a jar of, of, of something uh, questionable. Was it someone's penis? In the refrigerator. That kind of reminds me of the strange meat and fallout that you find in the fridge. They're just like, I don't want to, I don't want to eat that. That's... Like, I think I'll leave that there. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't look so good. Uh, her husband, Dimitri, 35, is still being kept in solitary confinement 
Med fears he will be beaten by other detainees. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. Glass jars were found in the couple's home in the grounds It'll of a be Russian... Eaten or beaten? Both. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, glass jars were found in the couple's home in the grounds of a Russian military academy along with still unidentified frozen body parts and steamed human meat. Among the horror finds are the pickled body parts of a final murder victim. So they've steamed them, pickled them, barbecued, yeah. grilled, from deep fried. You can barbecue shrimp, you can grill a shrimp. Oh my god. Shrimp on a stick. Chicken fried steak, steak fried chicken. <laughs> The pair from Kran Sodar, Rus- uh, Russia. Transylvania? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, straight Ooh, from Jeffrey Dahmer's Wet Dream, they confessed to murdering the waitress. Jeffrey Dahmer's it, Wet Dream? Yeah, that that's really straight from there from, but it's really Kran oh. Sodar City. Um, yeah, so they, they murdered the, uh, the waitress in a fit of jealousy. After Natalia accused her of seeking to seduce her husband. Oh <laughs> you're God. seeking to seduce my husband. You, are see- you know what you're seeking? To seduce my husband. <laughs> so I'm going to have <sighs> to eat you. Um, in jail, Natalia is reported to have complained about the separation. Or no, rather, uh, Dimitri has re- reported to have complained about the separation from his wife. I mean, come on, hasn't this bitch ever heard of Cheetos? <laughs> Who he was said to dominate, so the woman dominates him in their relationship. Uh, They're fit- talking a lot about their sex lives. Yeah. Or is that? <laughs> that just in life. Yeah, yeah. Dominate. It's a lot of femdom stuff. Femdom. Uh, Is that Vi- dumb? Victor Belikov, a human. I'm Victor Belikov, oh. human rights activist, oh. permitted to meet the alleged cannibal. In detention, and said, "It is very obvious he loves his wife very much, and the water is about her." Uh, Victor also oh, visited Natalia, whose grandfather, another name I can't pronounce, was yeah. a decorated World War II hero in Stalin's forces. Ah, oh, wow. that's nice. And he said might that have been the, a hungry guy too. <laughs> yeah, and said that the pair had, yeah, those those winters in uh, Russia get yeah. awfully cold, and said that the pair had spoken of their mad love for each other. She told uh, the man he feels for her husband like a mother. Yeah, this is so weird. Wow. Um, yeah, so there's uh, they keep a lot taunting of these. Stuff they going keep on. taunting these poor people from their cells. They keep calling them cannibals and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Do you think you you believe in cannibal rights? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I do. Now this is <laughs> now this is just like. <laughs> now, this cool. is just a picture of a bowl of chili in a fridge, right, Craig? Now, Whoa. anywhere else it would be... Wasn't that a pig head or something like that? <laughs> Wasn't there two fucking heads behind it? Oh. It was just a chicken. It's a chicken. It was just a... Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's very unkept. Not very yeah. sanitary, that fridge. That chili was... Now, good, that though. chili is just a picture of chili. It could be any oh, sort of no. chili. But we know it's mystery meat at this it's house. It's waitress chili. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> waitress chili. Her, a little bit of her apron was sticking out. Oh, my God. Her bonnet, her hairnet. One sickening image appears to show a severed human head being served as oh, a geez. at dinner. With an apple in its mouth? Pretty much, Holy right? Fuck, I mean, that's what it is. Dude, really? Yeah. It's blurred out, but like... It's wow. blurred out, but it's, it's the it's head's in the middle. It, very it's spooky. Just, we're having a spooky this time is, tonight. I'm very spooky. Yeah. Oh, man. Feel my arm, man. Oh, look at all these goosebumps. Oh, jeez. All right. Paging R.L. Stein. I <laughs> <laughs> just saw a severed head and <laughs> you're making a Goosebumps <laughs> I love that Goosebumps book. Actually, uh, there is a Goosebumps book called uh, How I Got My Shrunken Head. So, foreshadowing. Not far off, yeah. Mm-hmm. The Russian Investigative Committee, similar to FBI, is examining an alleged confession from the ex-nurse that she and her husband killed and ate at least 30 people. The alleged victims include women dating at a dating site who went missing after arranging to meet up with the man. It's a really unfortunate story. Yeah, all that cannibal talk. Uh, is it, is it doing anything for you? Yeah, I feel like I'm having a Mac attack right now. <laughs> getting, getting hungry, man. Either a Jack attack Stomach or a Mac attack. 
It's like so horrible what happened to those people, but man, I'm starving. Yeah. Maybe some hearty meat is what I could go for. <laughs> Would you ever eat out of a cannibal's refrigerator? Eat out a cannibal? I mean, if they didn't tell me they were... Like, how does that affect me eating them out? <laughs> you don't shame around these parts. <laughs> yeah, it's true, yeah. <laughs> uh, eat out of Here, a I'm gonna cannibal's set out, I'm going to set up fridge? this cakewalk. What's up? You so eat- that's actually a good question, would I eat out of a cannibal's fridge? Yeah. Like, is anything they have... That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. even yeah. like an Oscar Mayer container, I'd be like, ooh, I don't know. Yeah. They might have, like, thrown the hot dogs out. Anything What do you think? Put in a pickle. There's probably, like, a, probably a 90% chance it's not human. Yeah. <laughs> but, you but know, that there's still, something in there. That 10% still too high. Yeah. Because, I mean, at my house, it's never more than, like, a 4 or 5% chance that it's yeah. human remains. And that's man meat. Yeah. Nothing weird. I'm not, like, weird or anything. Just a regular American. Yeah. That's how it goes. Human Craig, I think it's time to talk about something other than cannibals. Yeah. I know. Our, our, <laughs> I'm looking at the chat right now, and the fans are telling yeah. us more cannibal talk. Oh, they are? Saying, oh, no. well, maybe not. Shit. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you guys so off right eating now. Human, human flesh. Flesh. Yes. Muscles. Sinew. Morally, is there anything wrong with Drinking that? the blood. I mean, it's the texture in your mouth, great. The flavor, you gotta, I, see, you gotta I, I feel like warm up to it. I feel like this is how. Or so I have. This read. Like that brainstorming, how the script of Ravenous got made. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. Like, so this what was are the a similar conversation? What are the benefits to eating human flesh? Yeah, you gain another man's strength. His essence. His if essence. You will. Yeah, that, that's proven by science. It was a graveyard smash. Isn't that kind of what happened with Frankenstein? I know that's kind of a stretch, but it's like different parts and everything. That's not weird at all that there was just some like imp guy that was going around graving, or graving robs, robbing graves. <laughs> Catcock Rob. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was rolling graves. around in the grave digger, <laughs> that, the monster truck. <laughs> oh, the he, was, monster. <laughs> he was stealing bodies. So, oh, the imp is that? Like, Igor. Igor, yeah. yeah. And he'd bring him back to Dr. Frankenstein. Mm hmm. Frankenstein. Frankenstein. And then he'd, uh. So he just got, like, parts one by one. Yeah. And then I believe, if I'm basing it off of the Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein, uh-huh. it's. Yeah. There's a. Mer- so, so he, he, you know, he's, he's, but like, Abbott meticulously Frank. fucking learn how to create a, uh, a, a, you know, bring back, bring back man from the dead. But then he sends out Igor to, like, go get the brain. Like, the final ingredient. He's like, I've done yeah, all this work. Yeah. But Igor, <laughs> like, I really, like, he, you, me and you were homies. Highness. And I know, yeah. I, like, I noticed that you've been wanting to help me. You're kind of, like, passive aggressive about it. So I yeah. want you to go out and get me this he thing. And then Igor has his butter fingers. And he, like, he has the, 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 the nice brain. And he drops it. There was like a paper bag that said good brain and a paper <laughs> bag that said bad brain. Yeah, and that mason jar that said it. Uh, it was just a guy you shrugging his shoulders like, huh? I don't know. <laughs> it could be cannibal meat. Up. I don't know. Yeah. The human brain. So like, he, he grabbed like a ham sandwich instead. And yeah, yeah. That in the no, bag. it was there was another there was another brain. It was right? the bad brain. It was the yes. It was the HR band? from the so bad brain. HR from bad brain. <laughs> um, there was but, but there was there? the brain there, and he was like, you know what, <laughs> the brain. <laughs> um, there was one brain. Pinky left, or right? the brain. <laughs> And he that was a brain that he put in the paper bag, and he brought back to old Doctor Frank. But but when they turn it around, it says serial killer brain. Uh, ah, yeah. and he was supposed to get what kind of brain? Uh, like a not a serial killer, male man or something. Yeah, it's yeah. just serial killer or not serial. Killer. Or not serial. The other one just said <laughs> not serial killer. Speaking of <laughs> so serial you really killers, need to know in a brain, really. I guess. Speaking of crimes, yeah, against humanity, yeah, against brother man. We're finally going to talk about. The Brian Jones case. Uh, the cold case, no longer. Yeah. We're about to compare our notes in just a few seconds. Yeah. And this decades-old case, Craig? Yeah. 
It better consider itself closed. Solved. Uh, yeah. You thought it was a cold yeah, case. I this thought I was, was there with you for a second. Right yeah, now, yeah. I was. It's a hot case. Man, I feel really awkward. Okay. About to catch me a case. Back after this. In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. The coppers, see, and the DA, who prosecute the cases. But not all cases are solved. Some fall through the crannies and cracks and are forgotten by the general public. When such an injustice occurs, it's up to some private dicks to sleuth through the evidence right to the honeypot known as the truth. These are their stories. Ooh. The when, July 23rd, 1969. The swinging 60s. As the kids say, the place, yeah. a swell mansion in Cotchford Farm. Was it? I heard that Brian was on his way to, or he was like on a plane, mm-hmm. but he had just come from Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think it's, it's, it's he for, went to Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> now, for this to be most benis- beneficial, we uh, <laughs> we had to put ourselves in you know, the perspective of, of a detective. And she'll be rising. Now, Al Pacino has played many detectives. He's played many cops. He'll leave a note right at the door. Al, I think you're the best man for this case. Wow. So, the, 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 the place, Al, a swell mansion in Cotchford Farm. It's previously owned by Winnie the Pooh author. The suspect's Brian's hot sweet oh, girlfriend. Father. A CD contractor, Frank Thorogood. And finally, uh-huh. some hangers-on cleared by the police and us AKA hot shot. A.K.A. the green guy. Exactly. That's what I was going to get to. A Peter. So now, right now, we're, pe- we're, 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 repeating. we're painting the scene for you. We have, Mary Jane. We have Frank Thorgood there. We have Anne. Yeah. Uh, yep, we have Anne, his hot, sweet girlfriend. That's me. And a few others. The body is found in the swimming pool 12 a.m. midnight. The body found by girlfriend. Calls police, but dead already. Hello? Police? This is me. No. This is not a prank phone call. Overlook Hotel 1 to Overlook Hotel 2. <laughs> Over and out. Autopsy shows the large amount of drugs and alcohol in his system. Also finds that his liver and other organ twice the normal weight. Wow. BJ is no more. Dead at 27. Which organ? His penis? That's the biggest it's organ of them all. The, twice the normal size? Yes. Well, Death by? That. Classified as misadventure. Yeah, misadventure. That's oh, why, oh, why did the rock and roller have to die? Oh, that's the name a beautiful, of this case. Was that a haiku that you just It could have been. I just, yeah. I think, you know, I, I, just, I just try to flex my, like, creative arm or yeah. creative side there. When I'm on the case, that is. Crack the case. <clears throat> so, I'm looking at all this, Craig. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's pointing to several uh, suspects right off the bat. Yeah. But please, can you? Uh, I'd love to know. Think, I'd love to know what your you think notes. Was a fake? What's it's a that? Fucker for <laughs> <laughs> It could have been a. Bra- yeah, it could have been a, a. A fake Brian. Left. It's a fugazi. Wait. Yeah, exactly. A fake Brian. <laughs> it's not a fugazi. Bonnie. <laughs> I think it was a fugazi. Yeah. The body was a fugazi. He had already he been really dead. alive, living in the Bahamas, <laughs> Chesterfield cigars. <laughs> living it up. With, in Fiji. Living with the dream. Biggie Small, <clears throat> now, Elvis, Andy Kaufman. Several people think that we, we how we've already gone over that Frank Thurgood was the one that did Brian in. A.K.A. the Green Goblin. Yeah, we know AKA about his the experimental technology he had. And, we know uh, about his pumpkin bombs. We know what his pumpkin bombs festive. can do. We we've know all... what they're capable of. <laughs> we've all seen the devastation. It's one of those things where <laughs> either you or somebody you know uh-huh. has faced the horrors of the pumpkin bombs. Most likely been affected. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, it's, it's a sad... 
It's a Fucking sad day. Thing. Yeah. Those pumpkin bombs. So it's either, yeah, it's either the Green Goblin, a.k.a. something Thorogood. Mm-hmm. Frank Thorogood. Frank Thorogood. Or it's the caretaker of the Overlook Hotel. <laughs> That's my son, Danny. A.k.a. Anna. Anna. And then there was a few other assorted guests, right? Yeah, there was Ed Harris. <laughs> I think it was Ed Harris. Because I couldn't have done it. I was drinking a cooler. Sam Elliott. The banquet beer. The cowboy of Los Angeles. Yeah. So I don't think it could have been him. No. Uh, <laughs> who else? Alex there? Jones. Alex <laughs> Jones, I think it might have been. Uh-huh. It was the globalist. So it could have been the globalists. It could have been Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> Jake As we have established oh, before, yeah, the, the man knows his way around a wormhole. It could have been his co-star, I forget that actor's name, who played one of the suspects in the Zodiac. Robert Downey Jr.? Or it could have been the actual Zodiac. Oh, it could have. It could have been. Jeez, that's been, a lot of people. It could have been Jim Jones, who was Brian's... Nephew? No, I don't. I'm just <laughs> going out on a limb. That was a stretch, man. Yeah. I, yeah, you had me going. <laughs> I thought that was really Could happening. Have been Anton Newcomb, who wasn't born yet. I just want to, uh, before I, I admit to, to what I know. Yeah. I just want to say that I'm really glad that we could break this case together, Craig. Me too, yeah. It's meant a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's one person that we had on the, a lot of people we've had on this show a lot of times oh. but one of them we somehow landed one of the great guests you could ever land a former Beatle John Lennon he told me he had some inside information he was there that night is what it was you know we, we've heard from it seems like we've heard from everybody except and so maybe the, the, the yeah. person that they don't think of necessarily being there yeah his name wasn't in the papers I yeah. mean you had to look down deep. They couldn't imagine no. that it was him. So what did John have to he say? He was watching the wheels. You know. Go round and round. Yeah. Um, Mr. John Lennon. Yes. He, he told me it was this guy. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Uh-huh. The person who had the gun in their hand. Oh, wait. It wasn't a gun. <laughs> uh, the person who shoved the person that had the water in the pool Ryan Jones into the pool and said you put your face in there and you don't ever come up yeah. that was a man by the name of Mark David Schaap oh my god another so I, one I feel like it's not so much a theory as it is I've cracked the case people maybe don't respect all my sources but the, the star witness for me was John Lennon's testimony that it was he was there and it was Mark David Chapman. That's insane. And Brian just got out of his hotel room with his girlfriend. This man came up had had Brian sign an autograph. It's Mark David Chapman. Then he came back later when uh, Brian came out of his hotel room and shot him. That's terrible. And then he fell into a pool. <laughs> <laughs> and then they transported his body to a pool. No, well that's very. I mean that's. It was Mark David Chapman. That is very. Like the day the music died. Well, I mean, I've heard, I definitely heard of that conspiracy theory before. Yeah, it's real. Now I'm gonna throw something at you that's a little that might be a little a little more taboo. Strawberry fields forever. But I think it is possible, right? Yeah. So Brian is at the fucking he's he's cocksure, right? Very cocksure. He's at the height he's of his career. He's a coxman. The height of his erections. And they last. And there's the bandmates that don't like it. So they kick yeah, him out. They kick him to the his curb. Dick sides. His dick sides. Driving everybody crazy. He's hitting women. He wants to play obscure eastern instruments. He's doing it all. <laughs> he's hitting all the major major checks yeah. right there. Yeah. And so he throws this party, right? So it's one last big bang before he takes yeah. off. They're already in Europe. So he's going even further away. Yeah. India. He's Sussex. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Was the Maharishi there? Yes. I will tell him I said Because he was going to learn a new style of music, friends. Greg, and the Stones weren't ready for that. He'll teach you to tune your sitar and teach you all the scales. Then you'll know how to play. He drove the Americans crazy with his rock George and roll music. Yeah. And he was going to do it again. Any old way you choose it. Yeah. 
with music. Got a backbeat, you can't lose it. Exactly right. You know what I mean? But this is gonna be this is more of like an eternal sort of feeling, you know. It's oh, wow. like you throw that you throw the record on, it's like I've lived forever. Hello. Have I, I had past hear, lives? Yes I have. I will die before the record plays out. Yeah. So it'll be like it goes on forever. It's it's amazing. But in a way, it's like it's sort of like Avatar, where you, you put your 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 ponytail into the tree, uh-huh. and you're just you're just <laughs> you're into connected the, with everybody. The you're connected with everybody. Oh yeah, in the tree. Yeah, in the tree. Yeah, exactly. And, and he was gonna do that. Brian was those. prepared to do that. He's gonna bring it to the masses, right? Yeah. Wrong. The stones found out oh, about it. The story is that the Maharishi taught him. Yes. Okay. The secrets and yes. the ancient. Now they knew they were aware of this because George Harrison was drunk and George let Harrison. he fucking spilled the beans. He said, "Brian's gonna tell. He's gonna tell them all about the secrets of the Maharishi." So this is what I think happened. This mm-hmm. is what I suspect. It was when he was writing within you without you. I think that Brian at last hurrah, so he invites yeah. his close friends. Nice. He invites Anne. He invites mm-hmm. Frank Thoroughgood. She drove in on the on the snowcat. On the snowcat. George Thoroughgood it's, came in on the on the go- Green Goblin wing. That's the Jack quickest thing. way to get there. We know this, right? So he got there fucking fast. Fast. Right? <laughs> Wendy snowcat drives like fourteen. Alex miles an Jones hour. was there. There were several people. Alex there, Jones right? was probably had a driver. Donnie driver. Darko. Oh, that's and then right. what I tell you, this is what happened, Craig. He's yeah. on sedatives. We know he has an organ twice the normal weight. Yeah, of a normal person. Legs. Yes, we know this. This is already established, right? <laughs> yeah. So the, yeah. Something very dark happens, right? Oh. So Brian's getting fucked the up. The lights go out. A and then screams. all of a sudden he notices all his friends around him. His friends are surrounding him. Yeah, and they're all wearing like all animal the people. masks. And they all have pig masks <laughs> and, like, on. And cloaks on. And it's very much like, have you ever seen the movie The Wicker Man? Oh my god. It's like that. I'm not so much a treasure hunter as a treasure seeker. Yeah, instead of it, but instead of burning him in a giant wicker uh, man, wicker, man <laughs> they, wicker Brian Jones, they drown. They drown him. And why do they drown him, Craig? If everybody grabs an arm and a leg and the head and they put him down, yeah, there's That's no it. you can't yeah. you can't prove a struggle or anything. Just oh, like that. Wow. And then he's dead. So the Green Goblin grabbed one. His girlfriend, Wendy Torrance of The Shining. She was calling the shots. Grabbed another one. Hey, Danny, help me grab the other arm. Alex Jones. And a lot of the other people were in pig masks, so to I be quite honest with you. I making out with a dead body in the bathroom. I couldn't quite tell about a lot of them, but I think yeah. it's definitely some kind of satanic ritual. Yeah. And uh, they killed that pretty man. They drowned him, right? Oh my god, yeah. They drowned that poor was guy. Sam Elliott? Because involved? Sam Elliott, I think, was probably. He probably said something horrible to Brian right before Murder. he died. The banquet beer. He probably said, like, uh. The Rocky Mountains are not as cold as the hell you're about to dish it, you son of a bitch. And that was the sharpest knife of them Jeez, all. Sam. Because Sam was his fucking best friend. <laughs> Sam Elliott was? That was his best goddamn Actor friend. Sam Elliott. That was his best fucking friend. And he's just Brian like, he just... Jones, those tunes you're playing, wow, they're the champagne of rock and roll. He cut his goddamn heart out, <laughs> and they drowned him. They drowned him right there in his nice that pool. That Christopher yeah. Robin's old house. Yeah. They did it. The they did him wood. dirty. So they, they drowned him in the 100 acre wood mm-hmm. in front of Eeyore and everyone. Mm-hmm. No respect. You get no respect. <laughs> it's like Rodney Danger. It's field. terrible. And now that the fi- I feel like the truth is finally out, I feel revealed. Or revealed. I feel relieved. <laughs> I'm, I'm relieved that I revealed so much. <laughs> you feel like you're wearing something revealing? I feel like once I get out of these pants, yeah, and uh, get out of them. I should just pop these off. Just pop them off. Pop your knickers off. All right. Corey, can you just get out? Yeah, just just yeah. leave. All right. I think this one's coming to a, to a halt. So I hope uh, hope everybody enjoyed themselves. Yeah, I know. It was probably spooky and scary. Don't listen to this too late at night. You're going to have nightmares. Yes. Um, there's still a cauldron bubbling right next to us. Oh, man. The coffin. Oh, my God, a skeleton hand just opened it. Oh, my God, I'm out of here, Dante. Ah! Whew. Okay, I think I'm okay. You all right? <laughs> yeah. You just ran around the room very oh my fast. God. Wow. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's very spooky. This has been a very yeah. spooky night. 
So uh, I said, I thought a lot about morality and yeah. uh, humanity. So tell us, comment with who you think killed Brian Jones or how you think he died. You know, was it suicide? Was it Green Goblin from the Marvel comics? Was it one of those pumpkin bombs? Was it say, uh, a bunch of like random celebrities that may or may not have lived back then that were Satanists that drowned him? Was it Mark David Chapman? Any of the above. Ghost was hidden. Remember to else. <laughs> subscribe and comment. Thank you for listening to the extra, extra special, yeah. spooky version. Uh, Halloween I know you edition. You wish it was longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't give you any more, people. All right, let's spend the night together. Happy Halloween.